Poké fans! Michael here, and today I'll be talking about some Pokémon conspiracy theories. I'm sure most of you hardcore fans know what those are, but for those who don't, a Pokémon conspiracy theory isn't actually a theory about any kind of evil plot. Instead, they're just some suspicions or extra ideas people have had about the Pokémon world. Now, most of you may have heard the more common ones, such as Gengar being Clefable's shadow, Cubone being a baby Kangaskhan, Giratina being the devil, you killing your rival's Raticate, etc, etc. So, instead of talking about those, I'll be talking about five of the less common Pokemon conspiracy theories. These are in no particular order, and some seem fairly legitimate, but others are just thrown in here because I think they're amusing. So without further ado, here they are! Number 1. Mass Extinction the main series Pokemon games only have two instances of direct sequels. Gold, Silver, and Crystal being sequels to Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Black 2 and White 2 being sequels to Black and White. However, Black 2 and White 2 are sequels that are still within the same generation as their predecessors, whereas Gold, Silver, and Crystal are in a generation different from their prequels. The theory goes like this. Since we can't know for sure the exact timeline order for the games, that means that all of the games after 2nd Gen could have taken place before Red and Blue. The reason there are significantly less Pokemon in the first and second gen games than in the other games is because there was a mass extinction, wiping out all of the Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, and Kalos Pokemon. Several more thought to be extinct were rediscovered living in Johto. The event could have been a disease that Kanto Pokemon had an immunity to, or a massive earthquake or tsunami that devastated the regions further away from Kanto and Johto. This could even tie into the popular Great Pokemon War theory. Maybe the other regions were completely wiped out by the war, along with all the Pokemon in them. The more you think, the more ideas you can come up with for why this theory works. Things get a little tricky when you bring in newer evolutions, but you could just justify that with maybe the items necessary to evolve them could only be found in the regions devastated by the cataclysmic events, so the evolutions are impossible. If your imagination is powerful enough, you can probably come up with justifications for about every aspect of this theory. Which is why this theory, in my opinion, is probably just fans being creative. It's still interesting, though. Number 2. Did Pokemon influence the 2008 presidential election? Brock is the gym leader of Pewter City. After you defeat him in Generation 1, he gives you TM08 that contains the move Bide. Brock, Bide, TM08. Barack, Biden, 2008. Coincidence? Actually, Bide was TM34 in Gen 1, so that part is BS, but still. Number 3. September 11th Reference All of the regions in the main series games have been based off of real-life locations. Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh are based off the Kanto region, Kansai region, Island of Kyushu, and Island of Hokkaido, respectively, all of which are in Japan. Kalos, as most of you know, is based off France. And, as you probably know, Unova is based off of New York City. The central peninsula of Unova is supposed to be the island of Manhattan. If you compare it to the actual map of Manhattan, you'll notice several connections. Castilia City represents Lower Manhattan, and the Entrelink is Central Park. But if you look directly where Ground Zero should be, you'll find the Desert Resort, a barren wasteland nearly void of civilization. A place, according to the anime, that contains a meteorite that could have caused the formation of the desert. Did the game designers decide to put this desert here as a tame way to depict such a terrible and emotionally sensitive event in place? Definitely seems possible. Number 4. Name Mix-Up Look at this picture. Just... Just look at it. Everything seems alright, doesn't it? Do you notice anything strange or out of the ordinary or incorrect, maybe? No, everything seems just fine, doesn't it? Hmm. The names in this picture are actually flipped, but they seem to make more sense when flipped, don't they? Maybe there was a mix-up in the original production of the first games. Seems possible. Number 5. N is a Zoroark. Zoroark is a 5th generation Pokemon that can shapeshift, similarly to Ditto, except its attacks and stats don't change. Could N simply be a Zoroark shapeshifting? The first thing you notice is that they have similar hairstyles. N also has the ability to communicate with Pokemon, the only instance of this found anywhere in the Pokemon universe. 
In Black 2 and White 2, if you use the memory link, a Zorork in the X-Team Plasma member base shows you a flashback where N appears. How would Zorork know about that flashback if it isn't present in the flashback? Every other flashback story is told by someone who is there. Also, a Zorork leads you into N's castle, but when you enter, the Zorork is gone. The main issue with this theory is the fact that N uses a Zorork in the final battle with him in black and white, but Pokemon have been known to team up before. Maybe they just let him be the trainer for a little bit. Also, the fact that N can speak perfect English also causes problems with this theory. But nevertheless, you can't deny that those two have similarities. Alright, that's the last one. What'd you think of these conspiracy theories? They're interesting to think about, aren't they? And some of them actually seem somewhat legitimate. What do you think of them? Do you think any of them could possibly be real? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone, and don't forget, gotta catch them all. Check out my other Pokemon videos and my Raccoon Man videos, and also like us on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe or I'll use Arceus to pass judgment on you. Mwah!